Welcome back guys. Today we're going to visit Hamcraft Custom Motorcycles. It's about a 20 minute drive from home base and Sean is driving me there. Before we head out, we're going to grab a quick lunch. To make things more efficient, some restaurants in Japan have these machines right at the entrance where you get to pick your food and pay. After you pay, you give the receipt to the chef and wait for your food. Sean and I got the soba noodles. The noodles are served chill with dipping sauce. One of the things I love about Japan is how clean the roads are, especially being such a big city. A little detour, going to a little car shop called Yellow Hat. Moments later. <laughs> My name is Rory McShane. Uh, originally, I'm from upstate New York, and uh, I lived in New York State and New Jersey. Um, in 2019, I moved to Tokyo with my wife and my two daughters. Um, and uh, about three years ago, I started this business, MCraft here. I build custom bikes, I do custom uh, parts, uh, custom builds. I've had this, um, this idea to build this bike for about five years, but uh, I knew it was gonna take me a good, almost a full year working full time to build this bike. Um, almost every part on this bike was handmade from stainless steel uh, right here in this shop. Um, you know, I had the idea for this bike for a long time and uh, I finally had the opportunity here. Uh, moving here actually gave me that opportunity to be able to do this, to follow my dream and my passion. Um, so uh, I knew it was going to be a ton of work, but it's something that I really wanted to do. And uh, so. Yeah, all last year, basically, that's what I was doing. I was in here machining, and uh, I also buy bikes uh, locally on the market, and I sell those. I flip them, and you know, and I do do a lot of uh, small jobs in. I get customers in that want some custom work done. I do that for them as well, and then I kind of would continue on this. Um, so finishing the bike last year was a big, a big thing for me, um, and really, I knew that. In Japan, it's not an easy uh, country to come into and just start being a custom bike builder. So I knew that um, I really needed to go above and beyond and I really needed to push myself to build something that people were gonna notice and um, you know, make a name for myself here. Originally, this is, was a 1980 shovel head, or 1980 FL, uh, FLH that I bought in the States and I imported it here. And, um, you know, basically all that's left is the engine and transmission from that bike. Everything else, you know, is, is made here. Um, but uh, in order to have a bike like this here in Japan, you have to import a full motorcycle from the States and you have to basically, there's a lot of things you gotta do to make it legal. And uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations and this bike went through the whole process of making it legal. Uh, so it's 100% street legal in Japan. Um, but just the process alone took me a couple of years to learn. It's uh, quite complicated. It's beautiful. You did a great job with this thank thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congrats on being on the cover of Vice Magazine too. Thank you, thank you so much. That's uh, such a big little it, That was, right? by, and actually that magazine, so my wife's Japanese and we came here about 15 years ago and uh, for the first time I left the States. I, I had not, never thought in a million years I would ever even visit Japan. It wasn't something, I wasn't into like anime or anything. I just, me and my wife, we got married. I met my wife in the States um, and she's American, and, but her, you know, her family's Japanese. So we came here for the wedding. And um, the first magazine I picked up was Vibes Magazine. And I was blown away by all the bikes that the Japanese were building here. And, uh, 
just their style and creativity and I was really inspired by that and every year we'd come back to visit I would buy that magazine and lo and behold I made it on the cover of that magazine it was never a goal of mine or anything it just kind of happened and uh, I'm super proud of it and um, it's meant to be right yeah wow. amazing so uh, you know they've been really kind to me and they're, they're great guys and actually all the shops the custom shops I've met here it's like a big family everyone's just really supportive and uh, it's really a different it's a different vibe you know um, and uh, you know the Japanese really appreciate this this culture they they love custom culture everyone knows they love their ca their cars and the bikes um, and it's just a big mix here of like you got American culture you got Japanese culture and everything in between so it's really cool to to be able to represent you know my my style here American style you know yeah no you did a fantastic job thanks I mean, man this bike it'll probably take like hours just go through every single detail yeah you know? <laughs> I, I went. I made a point. Every piece I made, I would make the piece, and I'm, and then I kind of would be like, "All right, let's spice it up," you know. And I know, like, it's, it's there's so much over the over the top stuff on this. Yeah. But I just knew. I'm like, whatever. It's gonna be over the top. It's gonna be all bling, you know what I mean? But a lot of it was just taking a back step too, and and keeping the overall look and the balance, and making sure that there was focal points on the bike. So you weren't, there wasn't like something super just extreme happening in one spot. And it was just to try to spread everything out and make it flow. Um, you know, and the, the details that I put in, I try to keep a theme to it. So that kind of matches throughout, you'll see it throughout the bike, you know? Yeah. What's your uh, top three mods on the bike then? The rear brake assembly. That was, that was by far the hardest part was making this rear brake. The rear brake, so the rear brake, it's dual lead, the rear brake drum and all these parts and the rear hub and the whole assembly back here was really difficult to make. <laughs> and then the next I would say would be the clutch, the clutch assembly, the clutch linkage. So all this was, was really a mind bender trying to get all this correct and to work right. Yeah, I can't imagine the hours. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> so many hours. Yeah, it was crazy, man. You know, a lot of it too. Like I do, st I do stuff in CAD, but a lot of stuff I just do on my in my head. Some stuff I'll just scribble out on paper. Um, but like a lot of stuff here, that there's a lot of clearances and everything has to work. So most of this I did in like just like 2D CAD. There wasn't I didn't make any kind of like 3D models or anything like that. It was just real basic kind of like I knew what I wanted. I just needed to get all the correct dimensions to make sure everything worked the way it should. You know. So that's kind of with the, you know, how it went for the whole bike. Um, you know, and it was just a lot of, a lot of stuff I did was in the moment, like these details on the clutch hub. I just kind of like had it up on, I'll show you my favorite. My favorite is that I made a maze on one of these, I don't know. but one day I was just, I did all the machining on this in, in a day. Oh, wow. I see and I, I made a maze, that's but crazy. yeah, it was just a lot of this was just kind of like, all right, Let's try to do something different, you know? And that's what it is. Just try to be different, do something different, think out of the box. And that was kind of like the premise of this whole, this whole build, you know? How about the third? The third would be, ah, uh, the, the uh, mm, I would say the front, I don't know, maybe hold this whole area right here, I would say. You know, the forks and, you know, all these pieces that I yeah, did. Yeah, the detail's insane. You know, the headlight is all, you know, this was like a solid piece of stainless steel that I machined. Um, and all of this was made in here pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. This was all made in here. Like, this is the frame jig I used. So I made this frame jig. That was the first thing I had to make um, when I got here. And this, this was actually... <laughs> this was not easy to make. That's awesome. Oh yeah. So that's my 2D like, you know, I did just did that on the mill. I can only go like left and right and front, you know. Yeah. So it's pretty basic, but I'm like, how can I get middle finger in there? <laughs> you I know. Like, I like what you did with the axle plate too. Ah, oh, thanks. Super original too. 
yeah, I'm just trying to do something different on this one. And I got a lot of, I, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to finish. So the rest of the frame isn't done because um, I have different ideas of how I want to do the top tube and incorporate um, the, the, the oil tank. It's all going to, there's going to be some integration with the, the seat, you know, how the seat mounts. So I have to like do some brain like crunching on that stuff. Uh, but uh, I'll get to this um, after I finish the rest of the work I got going on in the shop here now. So hopefully in the next few months I can get, get on the next big build again, you know. So, and uh, these are the machines that I use here. Just, uh, I have a, just basically a lot of this stuff is just, you know, there's not a lot in the shop. It's, I got a lathe here, I got a mill. Um, I got my belt sander here. I have all the milling accessories, um, indexers, and uh, rotary tables that I use um, for various different parts. So, you know, I was, I've was i been a machinist for 25 years now, but the first 20, 20 years in the States, uh, mostly working in aerospace. So I have a pretty deep background in machining. So like, you know, all this stuff you can do in a small shop, you can build a bike like that, like this in a small shop, but it's just, you know, having some knowledge of machining, you know, and the, some welding, um, you know, basic stuff. I don't have a lot of real complicated machinery in here. So I think, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of guys already have this stuff. So, you know, it's, it's just, uh, getting out in your shop and experimenting. Try and error for Try and error, try and trial and error and just, you know, just, you know, for me, the biggest thing, like with a build like this, having taken um, almost a whole year was tr staying inspired. Like, because it's real easy to, to lose your motivation. It's real easy to get burnt out. And I did get burned out while building it. So, you know, I kind of just had to create some, a way for me to continue working, make progress and um you know feel good about what i was doing and what i did was i just made small goals whether they were daily goals or weekly goals to break down such a big build you can just kind of focus on these small goals instead of being like oh i gotta oh, make right. i gotta make this i gotta make that oh my god and that's what happens and you then you're just like ah oh. you get burned out you get frustrated you're like i right, i'm too busy for this like i can't do this but instead you, you, you take like, you know, tomorrow I'm going to go in the shop. I'm going to make just this one part. So all I got to do is make an axle spacer or whatever. So, and in the meantime, you think about that. I'm going to make this axle spacer. This is how I'm going to do it because maybe you only have two hours. So plan it out before you go into the shop. You know what you got to do. Tomorrow I'm going to go in. I'm going to make this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get that done. And you go in the shop the next day and you do it and you get it done and then you feel good. And you're like, okay, I can do this. Next day, you do the same thing. And you just do it over and over and over. And before you know it, you got a whole chopper. <laughs> did you build bikes back in the States or? I did a little bit. I built, I, built, uh, I built a few bikes, like maybe like four bikes back in the States. And this is over course of years, like, you know, with gaps. You know, I did a lot of cars. I built a lot of cars. I was big into that. So it was just, you know, whatever I was inspired by at the time. But I find that this, this is perfect for me, like doing these bikes because uh, I'm able to be creative and, um, you know, use my skills as a machinist, but also that artistic sense too, because choppers are such like a widely accepted for art form, you know, like we look at these as like art, same with hot rods and whatever, like the builder, it's not just your skill set, but it's also your artistic ability, you know, sense and ability, you know. And um, that's why I find that these bikes just fit me perfect for doing this kind of work and this kind of art. I call it art. Are you accepting new customers at the moment or? Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the next right here. I'm waiting for the next guy who wants the next special bike that's going to be in all the shows in Japan. Maybe, 
Shows in the States too, who knows? What's the best way to reach out to you? Instagram? Uh, Instagram, McShanecraft, you know, uh, at McShanecraft, Instagram. Just DM that, you, message you? Yeah, you DM me, you know. Um, so, yeah. And, and look, you know, I'm always here to, to help people too. Like, you know, questions about, oh, I got a machine. I don't know how to set it up or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm, I've been doing machining for so long now. It's, it's like, you know, it's like second nature to me. So um, I love helping people out with that kind of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, hit me up. Yeah. City Slicker. City Slicker, right? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was appropriate, you know? <laughs> no, I think it's perfect. You said the, the rear brake extender was the hardest and the most challenging part? Yeah. 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 It took me about <laughs> a month. And I'm not going to lie. Like, when I finished that brake assembly, I, I shed a tear. I did. Because, <laughs> <laughs> man, it was like... Just the polishing, and it was just so much. It took so much out of me because I was working long hours in the shop, and then I'd go home, and I was on the computer for, like, hours, like, trying to work out problems of fitment. So the next day when I could go in the shop, I could machine those parts so that I had to keep the flow going, you know. So I was just working so much, just trying to get all these, everything to work right, you know. And when I finally finished it and I saw everything working it was just like it was like man like just felt so good yeah and and I, I had this like you know it was like goosebumps I'm like ah <laughs> I think people are gonna like this you know <laughs> so you know it was a good it was a good moment and the rest of the build after that the rest of the build kind of like flows into a that's kind of when I got the sense of like because I was having this this kind of like acceptance of what it meant to do your best work and that's what i was saying earlier what it means to do your best work and um you can't always do your best work but when you're given the opportunity to do your best work and i knew i had to do it with this and it's just a it's a question you have to you have to find out where your limit is should i keep going on this part i could keep polishing it make it nicer but i'm tired you know i'm tired i don't want to go anymore and that's when I realized, okay, this is my, that means this, this is my best work. You know, could I go further? Yes, but I'm not willing to go further with it. That means that this is my best work. And once I kind of figured that out, it was real easy for me to, to, to move along and be like, yep, that's good. Moving on. Yep, that's good. And then I, I couldn't, now I want to look at it and you say, could you do it better? I'd say, nope. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. How about the paint job? The paint, I had actually a local guy, he's really close to here. His, his Instagram's at Stupid Crown. And uh, he's a local painter. He, does, he just paints motorcycles and uh, motor, just, this is what he does. And he does all kinds of bikes, really nice guy. And um, he, you know, I, was, I had a painter in the States, but I, it was just too hard. Like the shipping was just so expensive, the shipping and the, the exchange rate too, because I'm paying in yen. And it was like, man, expensive, you know? So um, I found this guy and he does really fine work. And I, I, this is exactly what I wanted too. Yeah. I wasn't sure about the flames at first. And like, I wanted, uh, I really wanted that classic chopper look you know when you're standing back away from the bike it's just classic chopper lines yeah. and uh, the skinny flames you know if i'm far away the flame looks like the chrome huh yeah right yeah yeah looks good i appreciate you coming today man thank, thank you for you. your thank time and showing the bike and yeah. your, your shop man i really yeah it's great a big thing is is if i can make something that can inspire people you know to, then to it's all do worth the same it, right? thing yeah because what you can look in the shop it's a small shop you don't need to have like big giant shop. You don't need to build a bike like this either, but just to show you that it can be done. You yeah, know? So. that's awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, man. Enjoy your trip in Japan. Thank you. You're my first feature in Japan too. Nice, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs>